school and basketball it's a job it's 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 literally a job and with any job though the day comes to an end and i think kids get it mixed up because the day's not over yet and they'll start the day like it's over and what i mean by that is you wake up and you go hard with your school and your basketball till five six o'clock like you you, go, you don't go home you, you don't go home for your break you go to the library and do your work before practice you know what i mean like if you got those if you got those times you go to you go to the study hall you go hard from the time you wake up till five or six o'clock welcome to beyond the ball podcast <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and you all know the focus of this show is ultimately to hone in on stories, strategies, and successes to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. So if you have not subscribed just yet, I would encourage you to subscribe on YouTube so you get to see my guest and as well as you get to see my pretty face as well. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast on YouTube. Um, but without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive in because I'm, I'm excited about today's guest. I'm really, really excited. Uh, we, have, we have one of the stars of Netflix Last Chance You Basketball, right? So we, we, have, we have a gentleman who, 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 who he's no rookie to coaching. Okay, this, this, this gentleman had, was, was formerly the head coach at Notre Dame High School in Riverside, where he was able just to get on a roll. Okay, we're talking about 360 wins with six league titles, the CIF championship, three regional finals, a state finals appearance, Cal High State Coach of the Year. But you all may know him as one of the assistant coaches from East Los Angeles College. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and welcome in Coach Rob Robinson. Coach Rob, how we doing? Oh, I'm I'm doing pretty good today. It's a uh, shoot. It's a Monday, and as, as as you know, and everybody else, if you know Monday mornings, it's you're making up for not working for two days, which you probably should have. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a Monday morning grind. But oh man, very excited to be here and, and talk hoops with you. Definitely, definitely glad glad to have you. Glad to have you. But Coach Rob, for, for the people who this might be their first interaction with you, which it shouldn't be, but you yeah. know, just, just please just go go ahead, take a second, just give give a little snapshot on yourself and just introduce yourself to the people. Oh, I'm uh name is Robert Robinson, um uh, pushing 50. Uh I'm from uh, Leavenworth, I'm from Leavenworth, Kansas, right outside of Kansas, outside of Kansas City. Uh, you know, Leavenworth has the big pen and everybody. Like what's happening with the prison? Well, my my father actually worked in the prison system, and so uh, my dad worked at Leavenworth, and and so I'm from Leavenworth, Kansas. Uh, moved out to California uh, when I was 16 in the late 80s, and um, from there uh, just started a, started a basketball journey that's taken me from the Midwest to the West Coast, back to the Midwest, and shoot to East LA there at the end right now. Man, yeah, 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 Kansas. I had no idea you were. Yeah, before I born. Hey, I was born in Kansas City. Uh, I was pretty much raised in Kansas City, Kansas, and mostly Leavenworth, Kansas. Um, and when my dad got promoted back in '89 uh, or '88, he put us in the covered wagon and moved us west. And, you know, so I went from Leavenworth, Kansas, to Santa Barbara County, county <laughs> close to the beach. Whoa, mm. what a change! Wow what what was that what was that transition like? Because uh-huh. I mean, Kansas is bruh hey hey first of all, hey you want you want to know what the transition was like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real the uh the first day of school i'm at cabrillo high school in in lompoc california which is a little north of santa barbara and um uh there was a guy on campus there's always a big man on campus right who's the best athlete <clears throat> uh best basketball player best football player guy was a really good really good athlete division one um football player and he's about six five, six six, brother. A little bit darker than me. And he's walking. He's walking. One, first of all, there's no hallways in California high schools. I mean, you know, there's hallways in the Midwest. Huh. But in California, there's no hallways. Everything's outside. Like you leave a classroom, you're walking outside, going to the next classroom. So buildings are everything is outside. So that was kind of new. But no, hey, first first day I'm walking, and I and I and I'm with a friend of mine, and a guy who had just met, who lived close to me, who took me to school. And uh, first day, 
and I see this guy walk by and he's about six, five, six, six, and he's holding this white girl's hand. And I was, I looked at my boy and I was like, hey, y'all can do that here. Like, this, <laughs> like, that's like, like, Hey, that's the thing. Like, that's this, this is what we're doing out here. And he goes, yeah. you know, he's like, what's up? I'm like, well, not, not out, not in school, not walking around like that. And that, <laughs> Yeah, bro. It was a transition in 1988 going from going from Leavenworth, Kansas to Santa Barbara County, for sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what we doing? <laughs> yeah, that's what Hey, that was Hey, you asked him what was it like and I'm like that was my first day and that was a uh, you know, California is different, man. It's it was there's way different. Even from, you know, from a weather aspect, you look close to the beach, there's no air conditioners. Uh, I, they, there was, there was kids at lunchtime with just, you know, they'd be in bathing suits and on their way to the beach in the parking lot. It was, it's, it's different than growing up outside of Kansas city. That's for sure. Wow. Wow. So what's it like now from being, from, from that being your first introduction to now, you know, now you, you being out there in the Bay, like what's, what's it like? Oh, man. Well, Cal- California is different. It's 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 a different beast out here. Um, everything costs more. It's a great place to live if you can afford it. Uh, it's um, uh, the, the the weather's cool. I mean, I don't have to ever deal with winters. Uh, I always say like I'm going to move back. And right now, actually, I'm in the process of trying to transition back to the Midwest, be closer to my father. But mm-hmm. uh, uh, like I always say, like for years, I'm like, man, I want I'm a, I'm a move. I'm getting out of here. I'm gonna go back. And then my dad calls me. Or my or my brothers call me because they all still live back there and they're be and they're like, Yeah, we're scraping ice off the window. Somebody's coming to do the driveway, or you know, it's it's I'm like, well, never mind. I'm, I'm not going back. I, well, what was I thinking? You know, but it's uh it's 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 uh California's cool, you know, but you know what they say is you know, once you leave, it's really hard to come back because it's it's hard to live out here. It can be. If you're used to it, it's just how you live. It's no big deal. But mm. if you're not used to it, you know, if 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 you're not used to, you know, a three bedroom, a three bedroom crib costing you twenty seven hundred dollars a month to rent, you know what I mean? If you're not used to that life, then it can be uh it can be a little it could be a little overwhelming. But oh man, sunshine's cool. I live in a really cool place. I live in the uh, Inland Empire. Right now, I'm about 39 miles from East LA Community College. But from where I'm at, it's about, it's less than an hour to the beach one way, and then it's less than an hour to the mountains and the ski resorts the other way. I mean, I literally have mm-hmm. everything right there in the middle. It's a, it's a pretty cool place to live. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's, that's, that's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. Yeah. So- so let's just rewind a little bit back in your story, because I mean, I, f- I feel like I feel like we, we we passed up a lot of time, and of course we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about Last Chance You, but I want to I, I want to know more about Coach Rob before he was Coach Rob. So, so <laughs> bring, bring bring us in, bring us in, oh, Coach. Man, before I was a before I was a coach, obviously, you know, I was I was a basketball player, and uh, if you're a hooper and and you did it, and if you really did it, then all of us, man, gosh, the journey is so real. And um, after uh, moving out to California was uh, from a sports standpoint was also eye opening because, you know, I get a lot of questions like what's the difference between high school sports and California, Mm -hmm. Southern California and then where you come from or or other cities or other places. And at the highest level, I mean, a player is a player, a D1 player is a D1 player, you know, football, basketball, whatever it is. If 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 that's what you are, that's what you are. Uh, the difference between Southern California and the rest of the planet is that there's just so many of them here. And coming from Kansas, where you know, in 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 the in the greater Kansas City area, you know, there might be there might be four or five Division One guys, and there might be a high major guy coming out of there each year, but mm-hmm. there's just a handful, right? Whereas you come out here, there's a hundred. They're just everywhere. And there's you know, there's just so many great teams and so many great players, and that was a that was an eye opening experience coming from coming from uh can coming from Leavenworth Kansas, where you know uh where we had some pretty good players. There was a guy that was great ahead of, great ahead of me. He played at Northwestern. He's the coach at you know, University uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin now. Uh, Pat Baldwin, um, he was great, you know. And I was, I remember like, wow, this dude is great. And then I come out here and there's, there's Pat Baldwin's everywhere, like everywhere. There's every team we play has a division one guard on it or a post player. 
and you play against so many great players and uh there's just a lot of them out here and it's no different today you know and and, and today there's just there's just so many great players i mean you see you just watch ucla almost win the national championship and there's one player on their team that's not like from LA, like the rest of the team is all like from the same conference in LA. Like that, that, that whole team is oh just, God. they're just LA and USC was no different. You know what I mean? Like all them dudes was from all them dudes is from LA. So there's just, there's just so much talent out here. So it was a big transition back in 88, uh, moving out here from a talent standpoint. Uh, I was also a pretty good track athlete. Uh, I was, I was actually, I was a, I was a damn good track athlete. And, um, I'd won the state championship in the Midwest as a freshman in the high jump. And then when I came to California, first of all, in, in track, California has one state champion. There, there's no divisions. Oh, there, no, there's one. So <laughs> if you win state in California, hey, you you the man. Like, you, you the state champion. Like, in your in your section, they, they'd have four divisions, you know, 1A, 2A, 3A, and 4A. But – once you get past that section, they just take, you know, the top nine, top five, boom, you go to state and you're the, if you win it. And so that was a big transition going from a state champion to barely getting into the state championships and, 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 and track. And then, and then over the course of my high school career, I mean, I made jumps that would have made me the state record holder in a high jump, you know, in Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, all those places. And, you know, I'm taking fifth or sixth, like, like out here. So it was, um, it was it was different, you know, and it was shoot, it was it was big time. But I mean, in retrospect, it was yeah. I'd rather be in the mix, you know. I'd rather be in that mix than than the one where where you know you might win or you're the best. Always kind of chasing that, which which helped me in in college for sure, because um, I wasn't always always the best. So high school was cool. I got injured a lot in high school. I actually only played like 12 games the last two years in basketball. So I was recruited more for um, track, but hoops was always my love. And I knew I was a division one basketball player. I could just never stay healthy. And mm. so, um, so I actually uh, coming out of high school, I actually went to San Jose state for like 20 minutes. And then uh, I was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to go junior college. Uh uh, San Jose State was D1 too. Uh, Coach Morrison recruited me to go up there. Um, but uh, I ended up coming back like right at the beginning when school started and um, went to Allen Hancock Community College on the Central Coast because I figured like, like I'm a D1 baller and I think I could be on TV playing with these dudes. And so I was like, I'm going to go earn it. And uh, it worked out pretty well. I, I had verbally committed to New Mexico State my freshman year before the season even started. And at the time, New Mexico State was really good. They were battling UNLV every year. They were top 25 team, always in the NCAA tournament. I was very excited in the uh, fall of 1991, play one year at JC and move on. But, you know, life happens, and I blow my knee out. First day of practice when I was a freshman, in uh, first day of official practice in college. And... Uh, and that was pretty much the story of, of college. Once you get hurt, like, especially back then, it ain't like today when they do surgeries and guys come mm -hmm. back. And, you know, back then, like, it, they check you into the hospital and, like, Jason Voorhees comes in there, like, with a hatchet and a ski mask to do the, do the, uh, do the surgery. You got you just all cut up and you're out a year and you're in straighteners for six months. And so the next four or five years of college, took me from um, Allen Hancock Community College to actually Stephen F. Austin State in, um, in Nacogdoches, Texas. I hooped down there. I was down there hooping for a year. That was a cool experience. Um, learned some very valuable lessons in life uh, when I was at, with Stephen F. Austin. Uh, I did really well in JC. I was one of the better players in California JC out here, even though I was playing on one leg. Uh, but I, I, was, I was getting a little bit healthier, and I got down to Stephen F. And uh, – uh, Texas was different. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't Kansas city and it sure as hell wasn't California. So it was a, uh, Texas, Texas was different, but the people were, oh my gosh, were absolutely and incredible. I met some of the nicest dudes hung out with the greatest people. Um, but it, it wasn't the experience that I wanted from a basketball standpoint. And, and the reason why I'm stopping here to, to say something is because I think I learned the, like the most valuable lesson in my entire life. Uh, at Stephen F., although at the moment I didn't understand the significance of what this coach was telling me, uh, I went into the office of the head coach uh, in in April, Aprilish, and um, I told him like, "Hey, I'm transferring. I'm going back because I was recruited pretty heavily out of California 
to go to I, when it came down to Stephen F. I went there because I thought they can go to the NCAA tournament more uh, faster or had a better chance than let's mm. say PSB, Long Beach State, schools out here, Santa Clara that were recruiting me. So um, uh, I go in there and I uh, tell him I'm a, I'm going to transfer, and he's like, "What are you going to transfer for?" And I'm like, "Dude, like you know, hey." You don't play me enough. Like I'm all the way down here. I was having a great time, but I was like, you don't, you don't play me enough. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to hoop. I only got one more year of, of college basketball. Like I, I want to play. And when you're young, you know, you're delusional uh, as to how good you are. And I was no different. Uh, you know, I thought I was, I thought I was great. You know, I thought I should play more. But I told the coach this. I said. I was like, I told him, like, hey, you're playing this dude and this dude. And there's absolutely no question I'm as good as those guys are. Like, you put me – because we're all D1 athletes and guys are good. And I was like, I'm as good as they are. And and the coach looked at me and he goes, yep, you're right. And he said, you're as good as they are. He said, but you're not better. Mm. And then he goes in to tell me, which I also learned something about college basketball that day, that it helped me when I was – later on when I coached, he said that – um. He said, you're from California, and you know, when the one guy is from Tyler, the other guy's from Longview, and the other guy's from Houston. If I play you instead of them, I can no longer get a player from Longview, from Tyler, and from Houston. Like, they ain't Ooh. messing with me. So he said, so if I'm going to play you, you better be better than those guys are. So, you know, of course, like, I'm 21 years old, so I just, like, you know, I just flip the guy off, and I'm out of here. Like, whatever. So I'm, I'm going back to the crib. So I'm going back to California. And... um I ended up transferring to UC Riverside, uh, which was a really cool experience there. Really good experience playing basketball. Had a great season. One of my healthier seasons. Um, I only had a couple ups and downs with the knee that year, uh, which I ended up having a couple more procedures during my college career. Like, you know, they they, they chopped me up in 91, but then they cleaned it up a couple times after that. <laughs> so uh, I, was, I was always rehabbing. I mean, I spent, you know, my whole college career rehabbing my knee, it seemed, but I had a pretty good year at UCR, um, uh, and uh, which led me to one of the most interesting stories you could ever have in in college and academic life for for a student athlete. When the coach recruited me out to UCR, uh, he tells me he goes, "Yeah, you're gonna graduate. Come out here, I'm gonna graduate you." First of all, I ended up at UCR because it was it was a, it was a spring morning, and I was at Stephen F. Austin. I'm over at Dorm Twenty. And, you know, if you ever lived in a dorm in the 90s, you got like, what, four channels? Maybe you got <laughs> you got you got the regular channels. You got ESPN and TBS. That's pretty much going to be it. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and so it was, a, it was a dorm morning. And uh, I wake up early. I have no idea why I was up early that morning, but I turn on the TV and it was the Division Two National Championship. And UC Riverside was playing somebody on TV. And that's why I end up UCR. Like I end up calling the coach like three days later and be like, yo, what you need? He's like, oh, yeah, I remember you. Come on out. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way. <laughs> you know, so, so that's how I end up at the UCR. But he goes, yeah, you're going to graduate. We're going to take care of you. Well, if you know anything about the UC system in California, its academic standards <clears throat> are pretty lofty. And it's not easy to get into a UC. <clears throat> Excuse me. A state school, different, different. You know, you go San Diego State, San Jose State, Long Beach State. Those are those are different academic standards than UCLA, Cal, UCR, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's different. And so I, I'm into I'm into UCR, and um, I, I thought it was kind of weird. Like, I didn't have a meeting with a counselor. Like, I'm in school full time. Like, I thought it was weird. <laughs> but after the season's over, I go to I go to meet my counselor, and I'm like, you know, in my mind, it's the end of the school year. I'm like, well, when's graduation? And they, the counselor looked at me. It was like, uh, none of your classes from Texas transfer here. Like no, like one history class. Like, dude, I went to I went to summer school, you know, freshman, winter quarter, spring. I mean, I put in work at Stephen F. Mm -hmm. One class. <clears throat> one class. That counselor looked at me and said, Man, you need another year and a quarter to graduate. So I go into my basketball coach's office, who's also the athletic director, and I was like, Hey, they said I need another year to graduate. And he goes, Well, shoot, I need another guy next year for your scholarship. And so, uh, oh. yeah, that was a rough one, man. I, oh. Actually, I can remember it's one of the most depressing days in my entire life. Um, I called my dad that day, and I was like, Dad, I don't know how I'm going to graduate. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I just, I've been to school all these years. I passed every class. I'm a really good student. But uh, that, was, that was a hard one because I didn't know. 
you know, like how, how I was going to go about doing that. <sighs> Bruh, like mm. that week, that week, I'm walking down the hallway at, at my school and this dude goes, hey, Bobby Robinson. So I turned around. I'm like, what's like, what's up? And he's uh, he says, Bobby Robinson. He goes, what are you doing at UC Riverside? And I was like, oh, I played basketball here this year. And he introduced himself. He's the head track coach at UC Riverside. Mm-hmm. And he go, he goes, man, for five years, I've been wondering where you was at. Like, 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 what, what, what'd you do? What happened? Like, how come, how come we didn't run track? Cause I mean, I was a seven foot high jumper in high school. Mm-hmm. And so he was, he's like, um, he's like, well, what, what are you doing now? And I'm like, man, I was, I was pretty much, I was deprived. I don't know what I'm doing my life actually at this point. They're paying for one more quarter. And, and then I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, thinking about going home, actually, I'm going to Washburn University in Topeka where my mom, uh, cause my mom worked down in Topeka and I was just going to go like take out a loan and just go back to the crib. But, um, he says, uh, he goes, won't you come out and run track for me? And I'm like, man, I ain't, I ain't ran or jumped, you know, and since 1991. So I'm like, I'm, I don't know. My leg is messed up. I'm, I'm not for sure if that's gonna, if that's really gonna, that's really gonna work for me. So he said, just think about it and, and circle back around and we'll talk about it. So like a day later, he finds me again and he says, <laughs> this is what he says. He goes, he goes, I got a hold of your transcripts. After your after this quarter, he said, You have two quarters of eligibility left. And he said, if you can make, <laughs> if you can make the national championships, if you can make it to the NCAA national championships this year, this is like April. So there's only I got like five weeks. He said, <laughs> he said, if you can make it to the national championships, we'll pay for your school next year the track program now you got granted i had to go back and run track the following year as well so i was going to be a track athlete for two quarters the the following year and so i was like well you know i'm it's an avenue so i called my dad and i told my dad about it and my dad said pretty much one of the funniest things he's ever said to me before and he says he said son you learned a valuable lesson in america right now i'm like what's that he said when they say ninja jump you just tell them (laughs) (laughs) high <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he told me he said you just ask him how high and i was like all right man so i go back and i tell i tell the coach yeah all right bro like I'm, I'm gonna come out you know so it was real weird like going out there you know and, and practicing track where i haven't done it since since the spring of 91 and now it's the spring of 96 and i haven't yeah. track for for five years and uh but like I, I was out there maybe a couple of days and we went to a meet and I'm just, you know, I'm jumping over the bar. It's actually having fun, you know, and, mm. and I started getting a little bit of momentum and uh, and my leg was feeling OK. And man, lo and behold, on a hot day, man, out of Cal State Bakersfield, I, mean, I, I jumped like seven one one day in a meet and I qualified for the NCAA finals. I was like one of the last guys to get in. And so in 1996, I went to the to the uh, NCAA national championships and um they end up paying for the rest of my school because i made that jump and that's how i graduated uh that's how that's how brother graduated from college right there it was it was quite the it was it was an incredible journey in a in a year for those five or six going from allen hancock college to busted up knee to texas to ucr to jumping over a bar to, to you know to save a brother's academic life it was uh it was a uh it was quite the journey Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I had, so I had Deshaun on a few episodes back and then oh, he, cool. he, yeah. And then and he, he brought you up talking about, you know, the goals at the end of the day to get the books, tuition and fees books to ask what I tell everybody. That's what that's, that's, that's the, that's why we hear books, tuition and fees. Like I'm talking to high school kids. Like I want to do this. I want a ball. I want to do that. I'm like, nah, bro, books, <laughs> tuition and fees. You know what I mean? Like, because if that's not paid for, I mean, that that stress on your know, ball is going to be tough. And that's why so many, so many kids like at the lower levels, uh, especially, you know, that 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 division three level or walk ons at a higher level, like they won't they don't make it through those four years because it's just so hard to be able to balance like the financial burden of college and what it takes to be a college at college athlete. My my son plays football at a division three school out here called Whittier College. And um, he played four years, but like every every year, it's a different team. Like dudes come out, they come, and then they're like, "I'll oh, forget it." Like, like I'm not, 
I'm not taking out a twenty thousand dollar loan to get hit this hard. I'm good. They just go on. <laughs> they just, they just, they just, they just move on. You know. Uh, so I tell, I tell Deshaun all the time, like, and all the kids, like, that's the focus. Like, that's why we're here today. Books, tuition, and fees, and because uh, all you got, if if you're talented enough. You know, if you're really talented enough to where someone's going to give you a, a scholarship to play basketball, football, but whatever it might be. I mean, if you'll just go there and play hard and who and stay and stay eligible, mm. you'll, you, you'll graduate from college like you will graduate from college. And I ain't saying you got to get A's and, and B's and, and spend 10 out 10 hours a day in your books or none, none of that. I'll be telling dudes like, listen, all you got to do is go hard at what you love and stay eligible. Even if you don't care about academics, stay eligible. And at the end of four and a half years, that's a wrap. Like you're going to have, you're going to have, you're going to have a degree. But what the goal is usually with young brothers is at some point during those four or five years that you end up taking, you know, academic responsibility. Like you, 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 you start to realize like, this is, this is my education and I want to do something with it. Uh, Like Deshaun was getting there. Like, like, like Deshaun, that lad, that last uh, uh, um, that last semester, like it, it was all about him, like what he wanted to study, what he wanted to learn, what he wanted to be into. Uh, KJ Allen just recently, same thing. Like they're starting to take, you know, res- responsibility. But books, tuition, and fees, man, that's, that's why you get up at six o'clock in the morning and do that. Is you think it's for that jump shot, or you think it's because you're gonna get on the court, or you're trying to score, but in the end, you know, when you're forty years old, you're gonna look back and be like I was doing that for for that education and. Hopefully that's what I get. That's hopefully that's what we get for him, you know, in, in the end. Yeah. Yeah, man. Books, tuition, and fees. Books, tuition, and fees, baby. Oh, man. Yeah, because when I, I mean, when I look back at junior college, I never realized how privileged we even were because there was a point where our coach was going to bat and he was like, all right, guys, we're, we're going to get the books actually taken care of. So he told he's told us as long as we give the books back at the end of the semester, he yeah, was like, yeah. don't worry about that. And I was like, I didn't realize it until like now being at a division three junior college, how big of a how big of a blessing that was. Oh, man, just it's real money when you I, mean, I tell my own kids like like I'm writing like like my son's a Whittier and I'm like, dude, I'm writing a check. This is real money. <laughs> like this. This is real money. Like like I'm paying for this for you. Right. And I don't mind the investment, but just realize like that's real. This ain't made up. Like I could be doing something else <laughs> with, with this money. So even books, you know, when you're talking about four or five, six hundred dollars for books and for a semester or a year, that's re- somebody has to pay that. Like that's real. That's real money. So, man, anytime you can get that, that them books, that tuition and, and that fee, you get that paid for, man, to say it's a blessing, bro, that's that's an understatement. Yeah, def- definitely, definitely. So, Coach Rob, what what is like? Where where do you see yourself in like three years, five years? Where, oh where, where, man, well, where where I'm going? Well, I, I'm not interested really in going back to high school, um, especially not, not in Southern California, um, and not that I'm above high school because high school basketball is pretty big out. Well, the competition is pretty big out here. Fans don't really care. It's, it's not like the Midwest. Um, like, uh, you know, you, you go to like you go to Texas where football and high school sports matter. You go in Kansas where high school basketball really matters. Uh, you come out here, you have a great team. You show up, there'll be 30 people in the stands with five Division One basketball players playing. Like people don't. Yeah. Wow. You look, are you, oh, hey, turn on a Laker game Wednesday, man. In the second quarter, half the people be there. You know, don't nobody care, man. You, <laughs> USC be number one in the country, half the, half the Coliseum empty. You know what I mean? It's just in the world. It's just it's just Cali. You know, it's just it's just California. It's it's a different vibe out here. Like not saying there's not there's not a lot of fans because there are, but they're just not passionate like like they are once you go to the Midwest and the South when it comes to sports. They're just it's not a part of the culture out here. It's not part of life like sports isn't. Um, Mm. Whereas, whereas, you know, where if you're in Texas or you're in Kansas and it's basketball, it is, it is a part of the fabric of your life. Like, you know, the, I remember my, my brother coaches high school soccer actually in Leavenworth at Leavenworth high school right now. And we're talking about the basketball season, like back in the fall or in August. And he's like, yeah, I don't know if KU Kansas university, which we live pretty close to, well, I don't know if KU is going to have a basketball season. I'm like, man, they will burn the capital down. If, they're, if, they're, if KU don't have a basketball season. Can you imagine him saying like, nah, nah, Texas ain't gonna have a football 
football season this year. Mm-hmm. Or Oklahoma being like, nah, there's, there's no football this year. Yeah, man. That whoever whoever was elected will never be elected again. <laughs> They, they make the, they they make January six, bro, look like the family picnic, man. They just burn <laughs> that spot down, and so out here though, hey, they'd be like, nah, we ain't gonna have no basketball. People are like, all right, cool, <laughs> just keep it moving, you know, just just keep it moving. That's again, it's, it's different. It's it's different out. It's different out here, but um, so I'm not really interested in high school that much because I, I accomplished a lot as well. I've won championships. Uh, I've done pretty much what I could do from a high school level. Um. I, lo- I love junior college. Uh, I, I, I I relate so well to the kids. I was a JC kid. And I know it's like to have your back up against the wall and, and you're trying to earn something. Um, uh, you're trying to earn that scholarship. And I, I can really relate to that. Uh, my goal in the next uh, couple years to be is to be a JC head coach or a division one assistant. And um, I'm on that, I'm on that path. And if I keep my head down and keep grinding and just, and just being good at where I'm at, uh, it'll, it'll, it, sh- it, I mean, it should happen for me. You know, I, I tend not to, to, to focus. I don't focus a lot. Like even when I coach, like I, I never focused on winning. Never. I never said like, I want to win. Um, now when I, when I was young, I did, but it's cause I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Uh, but as, as you get older, you know, and, and, and you get a little bit more experience in coaching, you understand that don't focus on winning. Uh, your complete focus has to be on things that help you win. Like mm. if, if the outcome is to win, you focus on the objectives to meet the outcome. And so that's how I approach everything in life. And so if my my outcome is to be a JC head coach. Then my objectives is to make East LA, the absolute best JC in California in the country. That's all my objective is. And if I do that, my outcome's gonna happen. And my outcome is to be a division one assistant coach. If I'm the best assistant at the junior college level at the top, one of the top JCs in the country, and they see me doing making my head coach that much better, then I'll reach my outcome. So I don't even, I'm not, I really I have the goal. I want to be a JC head coach or division one assistant, but I don't, I don't, I rarely, if ever, think about that. I'm thinking about how I can be just great today for the kids I'm working with right now. And I know in the end, like that'll, that should take care of it. That, that'll that take care of itself. So I'd, I'd love to be a, a division one assistant coach or a JC or JC head coach. And believe it or not, I'm, I've had some, uh, I've been close in the last month or so to, to achieving those goals. I, I've been, I've been pretty close. Um, a couple opportunities where it just wasn't the right opportunity to to leave East LA at this particular moment, um, especially because there's I mean there's there's serious talks about coming back and start filming in the fall for for season two to see if we can run this thing back and and uh, I'd like to be a part of that experience and if I'm going if I'm going to give that experience up for a season two well it better be a damn good JC job. You know, or maybe a pretty good division one job <laughs> on the assistant to to give that up. Because as I was talking to a, a coach in New Jersey, uh, who I was talking to in about assistant position at a D one school, and he didn't have much. It was like a real low lower level thing, but he he liked me. He wanted me a part of it. He said, "Nah." He said, "Bro, you gotta go build your brand, man." He's this your fifteen minutes. He said, "You better enjoy it." <laughs> he said, "You better mm-hmm. better enjoy it now, and and build your brand and and so." That is the goal is is where I'm at is just just to be great where I'm at and help these young brothers I got right now. Like all the guys you saw in last chance, like most of them moved on. We got a whole new cast of characters who who need me just as much as those other dudes did. And so now my focus is them. And in the next 12 months, I got to get them out as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just dope just to, you know, hear you share that and and. And then I, I actually talked with, with Coach Mosley. And then one thing that he was just saying about you was just how, like, with your mindset, how you just embrace the adversity. He said, you just, you just lean into it. It's like, okay, what we got to do? Okay, lean into it. Whatever it is, just lean into it. And then now, just as we're having this conversation, now I can see why I know you're going to be a phenomenal, why, why I, I know you, you know, were phenomenal at the high school level, why I know you're going to be phenomenal in your role now and then whatever is next, you know, if it be you head coach, if it be you being an assistant coach. So I, I, I just, I just want to give you those flowers coach Rob. Cause I mean, 
you're 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 a humble dude but you're also extremely accomplished and i mean you're, you're doing you're doing a lot of good for a lot of people that's well that's the goal right is um you know when when you're young you know you're so selfish in everything that you do and i was no different like it's not like it's not like in high school like 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 i had i had problems getting through a door in my head was so big in high school <laughs> and when i got to college you know it's it's like I, I was delusional as to how good i was and i had an attitude about it and when i started coaching when i started coaching it's not like i was trying to help everyone around me i i was trying to win when i started coaching when i when i was beginning of my coaching career my thought process was always hey who around here can help me win that's that's what it, what player can help me win what teacher are like who around here can help me win basketball games what who can help because that's all i knew was winning because when you're a player it's all about winning right and so um who can help me win but over my journey and over the experience what i learned is all right who can i help around me win how can i help everyone around me win because how can i how can i lose if everybody around me is winning if wow. everybody in my circle is winning then i'm gonna win so that focus has changed and over the last five six years of my high school uh coaching career I, my focus was on everybody I, how can i make the teachers better you know how can i make the girl in food services better how can i help the maintenance guy i mean how can i help anybody like how can i help you because if you're doing well i'm going to be doing well and that really helped me when i got to to east la and jc and especially with coach mosley because if coach mosley's successful and our players are successful, then I'm successful. It's that's the given. That is the absolute given. So that's what I'm out here trying to do is just help everyone around me. You know, from from my own family to 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 those to those players. And and Coach Mo gave me an incredible opportunity to do that. Man, Mosley's a great leader, and he needed help. And that was that was the perfect storm of of why this whole thing worked so well is because he desperately needed help and and i'm i was capable at this point of my life i'm, I'm really good at filling holes and mm. so I, I hung around after like one month of, of coaching at east la i was like oh man plug that hole plug this hole i just started plugging holes for coach mo and and whatever went down hey like i got it like and if i don't have it tell me how to go do it i'm gonna take care of this so that he can do his job better you guys saw him on that on that court that dude is man that that brother needs energy i mean he'd be he'd be coming at you for, <laughs> for two or three hours and I, I i'm always in amazement i'm looking like man he, he used to wear me out all the time and i'm just watching and so he, he 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 his day is so and he's doing all the same things i'm doing that man wakes up trying he he, he wakes up with a burden on his heart and on his mind to get these kids out i mean he wakes up with that with that burden and when I started feeling that burden, like really started feeling it, like about about a month in, I'm like, well, how can I alleviate this man's? How, how can I take some of this off his plate? Like, how can I do that? And it wasn't basketball. It wasn't. I mean, I helped with drills. And of course, I mean, I set up, I, I did the laundry, I did all that. But the actual coaching, he didn't need me as much the actual coaching. It's the other 22 hours of the day where he desperately needed help so that those two hours of the day, he can come in with his hard hat and and go to work and so i started filling those holes outside of basketball practice and uh man when the season started I, I really noticed it making a difference like the holes i was filling were starting to it, you could see like the work i was doing was making a difference and how the players were coming to practice mentally which helped them do well physically while they were there um the the work i was doing with them academically help the kids sleep at night like they would leave out of there like they was the, the pressure would be off of them and they'd have a different attitude the next day because their work was done the day before and all of that started equating to better practices and more winning and so i just leaned into that i was like oh well shoot this this is what i'm this, this is what equates to winning like he he don't need me to draw up a play he's got it all right but what he does need is these three dudes to work on this chicano studies at 9 30 tonight because if not, they're going to be struggling tomorrow. That's what's needed. And so that's what I just leaned into. And, and shoot, that's, that's what I did. And uh, with, the, with the goal of, of just, just helping my man out 
plugging those holes. And it's, it's part of the process of learning how to be an assistant, you know, being a good employee. I've been a head coach for 20 years. And so uh, I had to learn kind of how to be an assistant. And I'm grateful and blessed that I got hooked up with Coach Mo, who allowed me to, to do those things. Man, so good. Coach Rob, that's so, <laughs> man, that's so good. Like that's pure wisdom, pure wisdom speaking, pure wisdom speaking. I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to let you get, get out of here in a second, but I, 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 I got to run you through the two minute drill. Coach oh, yeah, yeah. Rob, got to run you through. And, and, and the two minute drill for everybody, this might be your first time listening or watching. Uh, I'm just going to ask Coach Rob a few rapid fire questions and we're going to see a different side of them. So Let's Coach Rob, are you ready? Oh man, heck yeah. All right, here we go favorite food yeah uh, uh anything smoked or fried oh yeah we saw you on the grill we saw you oh, on the I, grill I, I ain't messing i'm from kansas city man i ain't messing around i ain't messing oh, man. Yeah, that's like your city card man you can't barbecue dog so uh, <laughs> it, shoot it it'll take your car it won't let you in the city limits man you can't get into 913 man unless you can barbecue so yeah uh, uh but uh <laughs> yeah anything smoked or fried okay there it is there it is what's the last book you read um the last book i read oh hey <laughs> you want to know something really funny it go off on a whole other tangent i just proofread the book i wrote a book I just, i've been proofreading that mm, okay yeah, I, i'm a first hard copy in the mail where i can go through it and now i'm i'm proof i'm proofreading that Ooh. and but um i listen to it all the time actually i a uh neil neil degrasse tyson uh cosmic queries i'm listening to that right now mm, okay okay yeah. what's the most underrated cereal uh definitely uh well there there was well you got young and you got old right so as a kid definitely like like lucky charms that like, like for sure because um lucky charms was they, they hooked us up because it wasn't even cereal it was that you could you could sold that as candy so that was really cool as as a kid <laughs> but as you get older hey i'm old right so shoot raisin brand you know what i mean i'm old so so That's fair. raisin, raisin brand is the most underrated cereal at probably in the history of all cereals of all times because if everybody just ate it everybody be right mm, that's fair what, what's your streaming show of preference uh my streaming show of preference uh what have i have a, oh uh uh for all mankind uh it's a it's a it's a show about uh russia getting to the moon first i'm a uh, i'm a i'm a sci-fi i love space stuff and so for all mankind i think was one of the best shows i've ever seen um because that they they didn't go out on technology they just used the technology we had to make a show and it was uh so it's pretty realistic uh my favorite show of all time though sci-fi is definitely uh the the reboot version of battlestar galactica Okay. And then what's, what's one tip for a student athlete? Uh, what's one tip for a student athlete? Oh my good. Oh, you hear, here's the tip is, um, uh, school and basketball. It's a job. It's, it's, it's literally a job. And with any job though, the day comes to an end. And I think kids get it mixed up because the day's not over yet. And they'll start the day like it's over. And what I mean by that is you wake up and you go hard with your school and your basketball till five, six o'clock. Like you, you, you don't go home. You, you don't go home for your break. You go to the library and do your work before practice. You know what I mean? Like if you got those, if you got those times, you go to, you go to the study hall, you go hard from the time you wake up till five or six o'clock, but at five or six o'clock, put your book down and enjoy yourself. That's when it's your time. But if you go hard, those eight, nine hours, then you can enjoy your time. Problems with these kids is they be doing the opposite. They be enjoying their time during the day and then at night try to do work and it don't and it don't work out. So treat it like a job. Go hard till five or six. Get done eating. Go ahead and go ahead and have some fun. Act up a little bit. You deserve it. You had a great day. But yo, go hard for them eight, nine hours and get your stuff done. Mm. And then the bonus question is who who would you like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Oh, who who would I like to who would I like to see? Um uh you know, uh, you know who I like? I like uh, uh, Kelvin Sampson down at University of Houston, uh, uh, the basketball coach down there. That dude there, uh, he uh, everywhere he goes, man, they play a brand of basketball that's that's like JC plus all of them the same size, all of them athletic and they all rebound hard. And uh, he wins everywhere, everywhere he goes. So from a coaching standpoint, definitely that. From a from another standpoint, I mean, truthfully, you know, it'd be really cool. And I'm gonna go out there on you, bro. Hey, if you could get Liz Cheney 
on your show mm-hmm. and try to figure out like like what what gave you the courage you know to stand up against what happened on january 6th and continue to do so because if more people had that right now in america man things would things would be a little bit better okay okay there there it is there it is you you, you put it out there so i'm i'm a, i'm gonna reach and see how far put we it, get man. hey man hit her hey put that put that old white lady old white republican lady on there and find out like yo what's what's going on she seems to have her head on her shoulders somebody you might be able to reach and talk to Fair enough. Fair enough. Coach Rob, now just just uh, I'm going to give you a chance just to give people and let them know where they can find you and where they can connect with you. And I'm going to let you bounce. OK, um, which is uh, well, I got one here. I think that's my thing up on the screen. That might be my Instagram right there. And I have a. Uh, hey, forgive me on this one uh like i'm no good at social media like my kids like i'm I'm literally no good at, at social media and and when it started they're like hey yo rob you know you gotta go on instagram and i'm like hey over the last three years anybody's ever showed me something from instagram it was just of a big booty girl that's all that's all i ever seen on, on <laughs> that was it so i'm like well what's happening on instagram because every time somebody goes like yo rob look and it's instagram i'm like yo hey like like, like what's going on you know what i mean so, <laughs> So I was a little hesitant to get on Instagram, you know what I mean? So, uh, so, uh, uh, but I did get on Instagram and coach Mosley made us all go on there and then Twitter. And I'm like, I know my Twitter one. It's, uh, Oh, Twitter is at coach two RZ, like the, like the number two RZ. And, uh, also man, the email on our, on our website on, on the, on the, uh, ELAC basketball website, so if you hit the coaches there, I man that each day. And I try to get back to every single person who reaches out and shows love and support because, uh, hey, you can you never have enough fans. And I'm, I'm appreciative for every single person who who supports us, who watch the show, um, because even if you can't support us like, you know, let's, us East L.A., if you see what we're doing, well, maybe you can support the community college where you live. And because then brothers are making a difference coaching those guys as well. And so anytime we can support what we do, you know, because that's what we're in the life changing business, man. I'm I'm trying to change the trajectory of, of these young brothers last name. I'm trying to change it. And so any support we get for that, hey, I'm all in. I appreciate it. Love that. Love that, Coach Rob. And then once, hey, you know, once that book hits print, we go, we're going to bring you back because I want to oh, hear about yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Ain't got nothing to do with basketball, man. I wrote a book about this. I wrote a book about a a, a mixed race dude during Obama's inauguration that that worked in the stock market during the crash. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I dabble in a lot of stuff, bro. I, I I dabble in a lot. Okay, okay, all right, all right, Coach Rob. We're gonna we're gonna have a follow up. We're gonna do a yeah, follow up. Yeah, hey, hey man, anytime, especially especially as we proceed during the uh, during the school year, uh, if if those cameras are back, hey, come back and get the scoop for anybody else, man. You come back, you can hit me up as they're filming season two, and you'll be the first one in, bro. Oh, man. All right, Coach Rob. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time, and I appreciate you gracing us with your presence. It, it, it really does mean a lot, and, and you're really changing a lot of lives. And just like I told you offline, I have so much respect just for the work that you do and how you're just you know helping cultivate the mind of these young men just to be – law-abiding citizens y'all oh, man hey 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 that's as you say that bro that's the truth man they a lot of people look at us man they be like well how do you deal with that like how do you deal with those dudes like how can you deal with those attitudes and, and all that and it's pretty simple hey if if my front door is open then they ain't gonna be crawling through your back window so help mm. me so help me keep the front doors of the gym open you know what i'm saying wow 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 man all right coach rob all, all right. right all the ballers all the ballers i want to encourage you all y'all y'all got to follow this man i got to follow coach rob man we, we had some good laughs but uh he definitely shared some shared some impactful words some man some true words some real words and just like i said before make sure you follow coach rob coach rob underscore elac on instagram and then coach two rz on twitter connect with him Shoot him a DM. Let him know what, what really stood out in, in regards to, to what he shared. And also, ballers, I look forward to connecting with you all at Jonathan Jones Speaks. And this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.